Yeah, man, a very pleasant good morning. Welcome once again to the People's Forum of In the Streets with Big Stone. Today, I'm talking about the families of victims and the families of supposedly uh, people who created these victims, the person responsible for the crime. And I want to send a big shout out to my friend in New York because he was the one that kind of motivated this video. His name is Shahul Shakur Ben Yisrael. He is a engineer and he moves from town to town and fix different machines and so on and so forth. So this one is on his behalf. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to talk to you about the families, the victims' family, and I'm going to talk to you about the perpetrator family. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of vloggers out there that I have a lot of respect for. I'm not going to call any names at this time. But there are also a lot of other vloggers that all they do is sit behind a desk. And when they sit behind a desk and they read from the newspaper, they're not really on spot on location boots on the ground to really understand the pain and the suffering that both side i'm talking about the victims family and i'm talking about the perpetrator family goes through yes we hear of x amount of people being killed and we hear of who did it or the situation that are, that causes that situation to go down but we never get a chance to analyze and respond to how the families of both sides feel. Let's talk about the victim's family first. I've been to many funerals, many, many, many funerals of victims. People who have died as a result of murder. And ladies and gentlemen, it is a very, very sad situation. To hear a mother speaks about her son, a father speak of his son, a mother speak of her daughter, a father speak of his daughter. And the pain of grandmothers and grandfathers and family members at the church, some people even fainting when they know that they'll never ever get a chance to speak to their loved ones again. And it touches the inner core of my heart. It is a bad thing because I'm there, I'm there from the the wake to the setup and to the funeral. Even at the grave digging, it's very, very devastating for family members all over the world to fly in to come bury a loved one that has been murdered. I am there on the spot. And I experienced that pain that the family goes through. And the wicked part about it, ladies and gentlemen, when that pastor said, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, and you hear, boom, when they throw that big clump of dirt on the lid of the casket, you can hear it. And it vibrates in my ear and in my heart. It's a very sad situation. So the family suffer from the victim. Let's move over to the other side now. The perpetrator's family. And I know a lot of people out there saying, Ooh, for them, for them son and daughter do that crime, you know, them for dead, you know, all the whole family for dead, you know. And this and that, you know, mix up the entire family. I'm just one person who did that horrendous act. They accuse the entire family of wrongdoing when in truth and fact. I have been there even before that son commit that horrendous act. I'll tell you of one situation, ladies and gentlemen. A father, I'm not going to call any name, he himself was a gangster. And sometimes the parents suck the sour grape and set the children teeth at edge. 
But in this case, I've heard this father speak to his son, telling him that, son, I used to live a life of crime. I've done wicked things to people. But I see in the light and I said, I'm not going to do that anymore. Now I am a father and I start to have children. And I wouldn't want my son or my daughter to get mixed up in doing that what I have done. I've seen one particular father practically cry tears, begging his son to put that gun down, begging his son to step away from bad companies. The son wouldn't listen. And then I had to watch that father bury that son. The families on both sides suffer. And can you imagine that bad boy, that wicked boy as he's being classified out there, have a mother, a father, a brother, a sister, cousins, family members who love them and care about them. And yet still, these wicked boys don't want to take heed. Today is the 3rd of February and we are celebrating Black History Month. And as you can see to my left, which is your right, the right Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. You can also see in the silhouettes in the back is Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie I the first. And we have great, great, great black folks that we can celebrate their life and should be celebrating their lives this month. Nanny of the Maroons, Paul Bogle, Sam Sharp, Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Double he be the boy Booker T. Washington, Thurgood Marshall, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman, great, great black people that have done great, great, great things for us. We should be teaching our children of our long, great history of greatness. Mansa Musa, who was the richest black man on the planet Earth. And yet still, ladies and gentlemen, our youngsters keep turning out in the wrong way. So today, the 3rd of February, I'm using this opportunity again, like I've used many, many times before. And I have spoken to many, 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 many youths. That even if you don't like yourself, because most of them don't, based on how they were grown, they really don't like themselves. They want to die. But if you want to die, and you're willing to take somebody's life, I want you to consider one thing. Remember the consequences of your actions. Remember the fact that you have a family structure that did not agree with the dirtiness that you did. That will be suffering when you get caught or when you get put down by the same gun that you rule with. You have a family member out there that love you. So even if you don't love yourself, because most of these youngsters, they don't live past age 25. Sorry to say, it is true. But even if you don't love yourself, think about the people that you're going to earth. The people from the side of the victim and the people from the side of your own family. So young man, the third of the month, Get out of what is devastating. Try to carry on the lineage of your family. Try to live a great life. Try your best. Walk away from friends who are encouraging you to be a gangster. I've seen one video and it touches me when these two brothers one was saying that um, 
I'm unemployed, but I have my rifle and my gun. I kill people and collect later. Something to that effect. I don't even put that on practice too tough, but it was devastating to hear that. To hear or see two promising young men put a video camera on themselves and they speak nothing but death. So today, the 3rd of February, I'm dedicating this video to all of you youngsters that have a heart, a mind, a soul, that if nobody else love you, even if your family members hate you, the Almighty that created you love you. And that's all that matters, man. It's all that matters. And it can be okay. It can be okay. It can be okay, bro. So, I understand the pain of some of these youngsters. Because I've been there. I've been to many funerals and many setups and many nine nights. And I've been to a lot of reform schools speaking and, and motivating youngsters to change. And I want you to change. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. Leave a legacy when you die. When you grow old, I'm saying, and die. Leave a legacy for your family, your children, and your friends. Let your legacy be one of greatness, just like our ancestors were. Let your legacy be that of greatness. So youths, the 3rd of February, man, pull up your socks, pull up your pants. Walk straight, youths. And may the Almighty God continue to guide you and bless you in your endeavors. Thank you all for watching. And I do hope you can have a great Black History Month teaching and honoring our ancestors that have gone on before us. Thank you very much. Yokai, Yokai. Shalom, Shalom. Rastafari.